welcome you to Living Life. Today we're going to be looking at the last chapter in the book of Daniel, and he's going to give us a glimpse at the end times. And as we think about holy history, it's just nice to know that God has a purpose and his aim in human history is the creation of an all-inclusive community of loving persons where he's right there in the center of that community as its prime sustainer and most glorious inhabitant. And that he is really going to overcome evil with good. And we get to be a part of that. In fact, he is in the process of transforming us more and more into the likeness of his son so that he can release us out into all eternity to do what we want to do. Because what we want to do will be what he wants us to do. We're going to be transformed. And we're just so thankful that as we think of the end times, that God promises that he is going to be with us even during rough times. And so what he wants for us to do is persevere. And so as we turn to a text like this, as it gives us insights into knowing that there's actually going to be a resurrection of the body and life everlasting, that we know that we have a blessed end to this life and on into all eternity. And so that strengthens our faith, knowing that we win, right? We're on the winning side. And so let's endure. And right now, let's have ears to hear as the scriptures are read for us. Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there before me stood two others, one on this bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. One of them said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How long will it be before these astonishing things are fulfilled? The man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, lifted his right hand and his left hand toward heaven, and I heard him swear by him who lives forever, saying, It will be for a time times and half a time, when the power of the holy people has been finally broken, all these things will be completed. I heard, but I did not understand, so I asked, My Lord, what will the outcome of all this be? He replied, Go your way, Daniel, because the words are rolled up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. From the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished, and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of the 1,335 days. As for you, go your way till the end. You will rest, and then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. So we're told that there's going to be times of distress as we are in the end times. And Daniel, though, gives us good news. And he says that the people of God will be delivered. I mean, that is our salvation. God delivers us and he saves us, and we have purpose and meaning, and we have a future. And the future is, is that there's going to be a resurrection of the body 
and life everlasting. And let me just read to you this verse 2 where it says, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. Now remember, this is in the Old Testament. Sometimes we might think, well, isn't that a New Testament thought that there's going to be a resurrection of the body and life everlasting? But, you know, this has been a part of the drama of redemption from the beginning. And so right here in Daniel, we're told about this resurrection of the body. Now, when we do look to the New Testament, I love how the, our Lord says, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And he spoke those words to Martha and he said, do you believe this? And you know, Martha had to answer that question. And she said, yes, yes, Lord, I believe. And you know, when we're at a funeral service and we see the casket there in front of us, we know that that person before they died, that loved one of ours had to answer that question. Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? That if we put our trust in Jesus, that we too will live even though we die, that there will be a resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I mean, do you believe this? Well, you're going to have to answer that question. I have to answer that question before we die. Let's together say, yes, Lord, we believe. And we have this, this blessed hope that there's going to be a resurrection of our body. And of course there's going to be because we're unceasing spiritual beings with an eternal destiny in God's great universe. And what a joy it is to know that we're going to have bodies that are fit for all eternity. I know that I am becoming more and more aware that this body that I have right now, it's decaying and there's things that just don't work like it used to. And I have a few more aches and pains, but God has it all taken care of because we're going to be given resurrected bodies that are designed for all eternity. And I am thankful for that. Now, as we turn to Daniel in verse three, it says, those who are wise will shine. I mean, that is our future. You're going to shine. I mean, we're going to have the opportunity to rejoice in the Lord and to reign with him. And so we can actually now train to reign with the Lord. And one of the ways that we can do that is present our bodies to him. And so I just want to encourage you to do a spiritual exercise where you can find a comfortable place, maybe on your bed or on the floor and just lie down. Or if you want, you can sit and just start presenting the members of your body to the Lord. Begin with your feet and you can make your way up to the top of your head. So like present your feet and just ask the Lord to help guide you where you will go. Or say your brain, your mind, what's on your mind, what you think about. You want to do it in such a way that it brings glory to God, or your eyes, what you look at, or your ears, what you listen to. Well, you get the idea, but we get to present all of our body to the Lord because we want to be prepared for when we're going to reign with him throughout all eternity. Well, what a blessed hope that is that Daniel gives us that there's going to be a resurrection of the body and then he goes on to say, well, how long will it be before these astonishing things are fulfilled? I mean, how long until we get to shine? How long until we get to reign with him? Well, Daniel gives us this interesting way of thinking about it. He says, well, it will be for a time, times, and half a time. And basically what he's saying is it's going to be a relatively short time amount of time that we're going to have to go through these times of distress and trials and troubles, but that he encourages us, though, to endure, to seek the Lord. And so 
here in our text, it says that what will the outcome of all of this be? Is it going to be annihilation for God's people? And the answer is no. We're going to get to shine and we're going to be purified and refined. And so let's be a people who have that hope in these end times as we travel along the edge of time and eternity. Let's be people who endure to the end. And let's do so to God's glory and our joy. As we close our Living Life devotion today, and we come now to the end of the book of Daniel, it's nice to know that, you know, there's not going to be one day longer of trials and troubles for God's people than God has designed. And so we're thankful for that and that indeed he delivers us. He has saved us and we have purpose. And we want to prepare though for a long obedience because we don't know how long it will be until our Lord's return. And I like the way that the book of Daniel ends with these words. He says, as for you, meaning as for you, Daniel, go your way till the end. You will rest. And then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. So even way back then, he's letting Daniel know you're going to have a resurrection of the body. And it's like he's saying, do you believe this? And I believe that Daniel would say, yes, Lord, I believe. And Daniel lived out his life with no compromise. He was faithful to the Lord, even unto death. Well, may we too, as we live out our life, be faithful to the Lord. Let's pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that as we turn to the book of Daniel, and as we turn to all of Scripture, we see that you're inviting us into a life with you. And that, Father, you allow us to know that you're with us even during times of distress, even during times of trials and tribulation. We thank you that you are right there with us, that you are a with us God. And so, Lord, I pray on behalf of all who are watching and listening that you will strengthen our faith in you so that we can walk humbly with you each step on the road of transformation that you set before us. We thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen.